burn. It's cold in here. Wow. Thanks, Santa, for the invitation. I wasn't expecting the Coast Guard escort for my sail up here to the North Pole. Boy, it's beautiful. Uh, and wow, wait. It's KringleCon time. Well, thank you for the invitation. Uh, welcome to PCAP for Fun and Profit. Uh, I hope to uh, spread a few minutes of joy uh, into your life by talking about packet capture analysis and crafting techniques uh, that you can use on your next pen test, uh, on your next investigation, uh, or just when you're sitting at home enjoying KringleCon. So starting off with packet capture, uh, so some of the common tools, uh, as I'm sure you're aware of, uh, are PCAP tools. These are tools that are built on the library for packet capture, uh, a venerable library that's been around since the dawn uh, of the epic. Uh, and uh, uh, these are tools uh, like TCP dump, for example, Wireshark and T-Shark, uh, Bro, uh, along with some other tools like Daemon Logger, which is a great software tab. I'll talk about that in a few, uh, and Kismet uh, for capturing all your wireless goodness. Uh, there is quite a bit of wireless here on the North Pole, uh, I might add. Uh, there are also uh, non-PCAP uh, related uh, sniffers, uh, like you can capture packets uh, directly on Windows uh, with uh, NetSH Trace. Uh, there's Solaris Snoop, uh, for example. Uh, and there's also a number of other tools that can be useful for packet capture for the pen testers, especially uh, DSNF, EtherCap, Yersinia, and we'll talk about each one of these kind of with pros and cons. So. With TCP dump, TCP dump is is a wonderful tool. It's been around again since uh, the beginning of time, uh, and as I mentioned in the beginning, that these tools uh, are are PCAP related tools. They're all using the same library, and thusly they save the packets in the same format in in, in a PCAP format. Uh, this is a, a huge advantage because if I capture the packets, for example, on a compromised machine uh, using TCP dump, save them as PCAP, bring them back across to me, I can open them up in Wireshark or I can open them up uh, in other analysis tools, for example, uh, that understand the PCAP format. Uh, so I can open them up in uh, Bro or I can open them up in Snort. I can open, up, uh, open them up in a variety of different tools. Uh, so a TCP dump is a wonderful tool. It, it's a relatively small package, uh, so it's useful. Uh, if you know, and the other reason why it's really uh, useful is that it's often installed as a standard package in many distributions uh, of Linux and many flavors of uh, Unix and BSD. Wireshark and T-Shark, another set of tools. Uh, they're two components of the Wireshark package. Wireshark, the traditional tool, is a graphic user interface tool, uh, works on Windows, works on uh, Linux and other uh, distributions. A fantastic tool, great tool for packet capture, although not my favorite choice for capturing packets uh, on a compromised machine, uh, on a client's uh, uh, network, for example, uh, for many reasons. The number one reason, though, for me is that it requires lots of libraries and additional code to be installed on that box. So. Uh, if I don't have to install anything on the machine, all the better. Uh, T-Shark, uh, which is also part of the Wireshark package, is a, a text-based, uh, console-based version of Wireshark. Uh, this can be very useful in that it brings a lot of the power that Wireshark brings to the table from analysis uh, to uh, uh, packet capture and packet uh, logging, as well as uh, using uh, uh, regular expressions and other things to search for things. Uh, data in packets, uh, but it also brings you to the command line interface, so you can actually pipe it to other tools as well as uh, use some additional features that, that are in T Shark, which are really really helpful, uh, like being able to actually format what columns get displayed in the T Shark output. Uh, so, for example, if you're sniffing uh, and you want to pull out radius authentication tokens from packets, well, Wireshark understands radius of uh, uh, packets and can dissect them and it has keywords to be able to single out and display, for example, uh, the authentication tokens going across the wire. Uh, so uh, really useful things there. Uh, Bro uh, uh, has a new name, uh, the, the, uh, but uh, it, it's, it's a wonderful interface, it's a wonderful tool uh, to be able to uh, go through uh, capture packets, index, log uh, packets. Uh, it's really useful, for example, uh, when you're on a pen test or when you're on incident response. If you want to look uh, for specific lookups, uh, specific DNS requests, uh, for example, 
maybe you've set up uh, your phishing campaign to use a specific domain uh, and uh, you want to see those requests going across the wire. You happen to have an interface that you're sniffing uh, and piping it to Bro, for example. Uh, you could use a Bro's notification system uh, to let you know when that happens. Uh, really, really cool, really useful. Uh, Demon Logger was uh, written by Marty Resch, uh, the author of Snort. Uh, it is a software tap, a very, very uh, well-written, small package, uh, very, very good code. I uh, highly recommend this as, as a great way to sniff packets off the wire, save them to disk. Uh, and Kismet, a venerable open source project uh, for sniffing uh, and analyzing wireless packets. Uh, very, very cool stuff. NetSH, uh, the uh, Windows NetShell, uh, it uh, allows you to do uh, traffic traces. It does not save them to PCAP format, but the NetSH trace format can be converted to PCAP with additional tools or code. Uh, Snoop uh, is on Solaris. And then act active capture uh, sniffers that I'm sure most of you are very well aware of, uh, DSniff and Edder EdderCap. Uh, these are tools that, in addition to capturing packets uh, and manipulating them, uh, they can also manipulate the infrastructure that they're connected to. They can uh, ARP cache poison switches. They can uh, cause denial of service on CAM tables and a bunch of other things to enable uh, you to capture traffic and or sessions. Uh, Yersinia uh, is a little bit more obscure. It's been out for quite a while. It's a great uh, tool. Mainly, it's, I think, a little more obscure because it's a layer tool, uh, two tool uh, designed to capture and manipulate uh, packets at layer two. So you can capture the packets, but you can also go through and edit the packets and then resend them, resling them on the wire. So pretty cool stuff there. For packet analysis, kind of the, the go-to for, for the industry, I would say, is, is Wireshark. It, it's free, open source. And, supports in a huge suite of protocols, over 500 protocol dissectors included uh, with the free version of Wireshark. Uh, and there are other dissectors that are available to specific industries, whether you work in ICS and other uh, industries that have specific protocols that are proprietary. Uh, there are some protocol dissectors for those as well. Uh, it supports and converts uh, speaks all sorts of, of packet capture formats. Uh, so for example, if you have something that uh, was you know, captured with a, an intrusion prevention system uh, and saved to their own, uh, their own uh, packet capture format, chances are Wireshark can read it and convert it back to PCAP uh, and vice versa. Pretty cool stuff there. Uh, it also has a lot of visualization tools built into it. Uh, you can visualize sessions uh, and conversations. You can pull out uh, a, a lot of attachments and other objects and files that get transferred. Uh, it's pretty cool stuff there. Uh, although a uh, couple of bullets down, Network Miner does, I think, a better job at the extraction or, or identification and extraction of objects. Uh, so if I was going for uh, a more of an investigation role, uh, Network Miner might be a better tool than Wireshark uh, to go pull some of that stuff out. Uh, very, very cool stuff there. Uh, Bro, uh, now the new name, but again, great uh, uh, network collection and my, mining tool. Uh, and uh, I, I say, say that it, the, the interface is well made for, for, for the right brain. Uh, the, the idea here is that uh, it really is a mining tool, right? Uh, for the left brain, I should say. Uh, it, it's a great tool to go through enormous amounts of data uh, and just start extracting data, looking for patterns, uh, looking for indicators of compromise and other things uh, within uh, you know, the network, for example. So for visualization tools, uh, we have uh, Multigo and Splunk uh, have uh, plugins that allow you to bring in packets and visualize them. Uh, plotting tools, everything from GNU plot, uh, for example, to uh, the R utilities, uh, to, uh, to many others, uh, where you can bring in and visualize either components of packets or traffic uh, to visualizing uh, uh, you know, the, the entire network traffic trace. And then packet uh, uh, crafting, uh, we have uh, two basic categories here, packet slinging and packet crafting. So Packet slinging, for me, is more tools that will craft packets on your behalf and send them out. So uh, Nmap is a classic uh, example of this. Uh, we all know it as a network exploration tool and a network mapper, for example. But you can actually specify the, the flags for TCP packets. You can specify 
you know, the specific size for UDP packets and or payloads. Uh, so it does craft packets on your behalf. It also sniffs packets uh, on the return. Netcat and Socat uh, and all the other uh, derivatives of Netcat, for example, a great tool for sending packets, redirecting packets, proxying packets, uh, and, uh, and, and so forth. Nessus uh, also will, will uh, craft packets on your behalf. Frag Router is a, a proxy tool that will fragment all your packets uh, to evade in, intrusion detection and intrusion prevention systems. Uh, F-Tester is a, a suite of, uh, it's a Perl uh, tool, but it will read, uh, for example, firewall rules or snort rules, and it'll create packets designed to test those uh, specific uh, rules. Then for packet crafting itself, uh, Scapy. Uh, Scapy is kind of the, the king of, of packet crafting in many ways. Uh, Scapy can be used uh, on pen tests uh, and, uh, and also on the investigation side in so many different ways. Uh, for example, you know, we recently uh, at Enguardians were uh, doing a, a, a red team. Uh, we compromised a, an embedded uh, MIPS system uh, and uh, you know, we didn't have uh, the ability to install Nmap uh, and other tools, uh, but it did have Python installed, and we we could actually uh, get uh, Scapy to run. Uh, so uh, we used that to craft packets uh, and map the network from that uh, embedded system. Uh, you know, which was, was definitely very cool. Same thing happened recently uh, on a pen test uh, where we were hacking a uh, Kubernetes cluster that did not have direct access to the internet. Uh, so uh, once we were there, uh, we did have access to Python though, uh, so, uh, so away we went. So the ability to be able to craft packets, craft packets on the fly, uh, capture packets, uh, analyze them, uh, and uh, even repurpose them and send them back out on the wire uh, with Scapy uh, is very, very useful. One other great reason from a pen test perspective to, to learn how to use Scapy uh, is IPv6. Uh, Scapy has great IPv6 support, uh, and uh, not many of your security tools do. Uh, and uh, a lot of organizations, once you're on the inside, IPv6 is wide open. Uh, so another great reason uh, to explore some packet crafting fun. Uh, then we have HPing, very simple tool. Uh, and your CINI, I already mentioned briefly, a layer two uh, capture and edit and crafting tool. Uh, a great tool, uh, I believe it was written by David Barroso uh, back in the day. Uh, your CINI is named after the Latin name for the bubonic plague. So I guess it has good intentions, uh, but uh, but it, it's a great tool, uh, uh, kind of a clunky curses interface, but uh, really, really powerful uh, and highly recommended. Uh, it's powerful because not only it, it, it does it do what it does at Layer 2 very, very well, but it also, uh, it's relatively easy to install on uh, end target systems. Uh, so all those things make it a good uh, tool for that. Uh, so this brings us to the fin. Uh, so uh, thank you for joining us here at KringleCon. Thanks to Santa for the amazing invite uh, and that Coast Guard escort. Uh, you know, a little heads up on uh, the temperature would have been nice, but I guess I should have known. Uh, but being from Brazil, that's what happens. Well, happy holiday to you and yours. I hope you enjoy uh, your time here at KringleCon, and uh, we'll catch you later at some other time. Mike, out.